This is not what I wanted to see on day 57 of incubation. This wasn't the nicest looking clutch, but the eggs appeared to be pretty healthy until today. One of the eggs started turning some unusual colors. The egg felt a little mushy inside and the snake wasn't responding to my touch. At this point in time, the snakes are fully developed. Since the snake is fully developed and I'm detecting some problems, I decided to cut the egg open to see if I could find what the issue is. When I cut this egg open, I'm hoping that there is something I could do, but to be honest, I don't have a good feeling about this one. I pinch a portion of the egg and I cut that pinch off very slowly and carefully so I don't injure the snake. I noticed right away that the yolk was very dark and didn't look normal at all. And the little one wasn't responding to my touch even with the egg open. When I removed some of the snake, I noticed that it had a cleft lip and palate and ultimately didn't survive. It also stopped absorbing yolk, which probably happened after it passed away. Here you could see the yolk stalk, which is similar to an umbilical cord and it's attached to the yolk sac, which the snake absorbs as it grows. This was unfortunate, but very interesting to see. Yesterday we discovered that one of the baby snakes in this clutch didn't make it. I normally don't like to cut. I like to let the snakes hatch on their own, but since this clutch is giving me some issues, I'm going to cut the clutch open in an attempt to save the baby snakes. This little one actually already pipped, but I'm going to make the opening bigger so I could check on the baby snake to make sure everything's all right. I have to be very careful and focused while cutting so I don't accidentally harm the snake. As you can see, unlike chicken eggs, snake eggs are soft. So these sharp scissors cleanly cuts through the egg. The little bit of red that you'll see is not an injury to the snake. It's just from the veins that are on the inside of the eggshell. Now, since this little one already pipped on its own, I expect it to be healthy. And when I finally opened up the egg, this little one's head was already out and curious as to what was going on. Which is a really good sign, and from what I could tell, this snake looks fine. So what I'll do now is I'll put the snake back in the incubator and let it crawl out on its own. This little one should crawl out in about a day or two, but I'm going to go ahead and open up another egg. Although I typically don't like to do it, I decided to cut this clutch of ball python eggs open. This clutch isn't doing great. We already lost one of the snakes while it was still inside of the egg, so I decided to cut this clutch open to check on the snake. These eggs are on day 57 of incubation, and by day 55, the snakes are fully developed, so cutting the egg open likely won't harm them at all. I had a good feeling about this egg as soon as I cut it open. The yolk was light in color and there was a lot of it, which means the egg was well hydrated. The little bit of red that you'll see is normal. It's not an injury to the snake. It's from the veins on the inside of the eggshell. When I opened this egg up, right away the snake responded to my touch, which is a great sign. And after looking the snake over, I don't see any deformities or any other issues. So as of right now, I think this snake is going to do fine. Here you could see the veins on the inside of the eggshell that I mentioned earlier. I'll leave the snake inside of the egg and put it back inside of the incubator. Ball pythons will typically stay inside of their eggshell for about a day or two after hatching. And I'm a patient person, so whenever the snake is ready, it'll crawl out. I'm cutting open this clutch of ball python eggs because some of the eggs in the clutch are not looking very good. The eggs are on day 57 of incubation, which means the snakes inside are fully developed, so cutting open the egg won't harm the snake. This clutch has the potential to produce some pretty neat looking snakes. And one of the snakes that I'm hoping for is a black-eyed leucistic, also known as a super fire. The little bit of red that you see is not an injury to the snake, it's just from the veins that are on the inside of the eggshell. When I opened this egg up right away, I could see that we got a black-eyed leucistic. These snakes are all white with black eyes and some of them have some yellow dorsal markings. This one looks like it has a yellow dorsal stripe and may have some other markings as well. But we'll get a better idea after it crawls out of the egg and has its first shed. More importantly, this little one looks like it's healthy and has no issues. So I'll put it back in the incubator with the rest of its clutch mates and in about a day or two it should crawl out all on its own. This has been a rough clutch so I'm happy to see that the snake that we were hoping for looks healthy. But the next egg that we're going to open up is squishy and it's turning some funky color so my hopes aren't too high for it. I'm cutting open this clutch of ball python eggs because some of the eggs aren't looking very good. We already had two eggs in this clutch that didn't make it, and to be honest, this one isn't looking very good. But let's cut it open and find out. I noticed that this egg is turning some funky colors and it has some wet spots on it, which is never a good sign. The egg is also a little mushy and the snake is not responding to my touch. But I still take my time and carefully open up the eggs, being careful not to injure the snake. Once I got the egg open, I touched the snake to see if it would move. And I got no response, so I'm going to take the snake out to see if we could figure out out why. When breeding snakes or any animal, it's inevitable that eventually you're going to lose some. And a good breeder will take the time to study that loss to figure out why and make changes for next time. I found this large discolored bulge on the snake's underbelly. And it looks like most of the snake's underside didn't develop properly. This is the snake's yolk stalk and it should not look like this. It should be much smaller. It's difficult to say what caused the deformity. And what makes it more challenging is I don't know if it's the mother because she passed away and it was her first clutch. We still have one more egg in this clutch so let's cut it open and see what's inside. 
This is the final egg in this clutch of ball pythons. Let's cut it open and see what's inside. This clutch hasn't been doing well for me so far. We've already lost a few of the babies, so I'm really hoping that this one makes it. I typically like to let the baby snakes hatch on their own, but since this clutch has been giving me issues, I decided to cut it open in an effort to save the baby snakes. I'm not feeling much movement from the snake inside of the egg, so I'm a little nervous this is not going to turn out well. I'm going to make the opening a little bit wider so I could check on this little one to see if there's any issues or deformities. And once we opened it up a bit more, I saw some movement. So it looks like this baby snake made it. Now all we need to do is to check to see if there's any other issues. When I pulled the egg open a little bit wider, it appeared that the baby was alert and healthy. I won't be able to tell if there are any other physical issues with the snake until it crawls out of the egg. I'll do the honors of giving this little one its first boop on the nose. Boop. In about a day or two, this little one will crawl out of the egg. Then we'll have a better idea of what morph it is and to see if it has any other issues. It's been a rough clutch, but we ended up with four beautiful babies. And as soon as they crawl out of their eggs, I'll update you.